up everybody, Josh Gladfelter here. I am the owner of Glad Designs LLC, a mechanical engineering firm focused on new product development and industrial design. I just wanted to make this video here to give you all an introduction about my background, some of the past projects I've worked on, and the services that I offer. So let's just jump right into it. Uh, I attended college at Colorado State University, go Rams. There I uh, obtained a degree in mechanical engineering. And through college, I was quite busy doing some side work, which ultimately led to my entrepreneurial bid. And college was a time for me to learn that you can fit a lot into a day with the right drive. So my primary working experience that I gained in college was a part-time internship at a robotics company in Fort Collins called Wolf Robotics. Wolf builds large-scale robotic automation systems with a focus on heavy fabrication. At the company, I worked in a variety of positions, starting on the floor doing manual labor and assembly, I then worked my way up into an applications engineering position working with sales managers. I later became a design engineer working on sourcing and creating the components that made up the systems. And finally I graduated college and became a field applications engineer with the company. I took on a variety of roles from robotic programming, on-site service, and sales. It was an excellent company to work for and I lent a lot of my experience to Wolf Robotics. College was also a time for me to get the taste for entrepreneurship. I worked with two startups in college, both of which attended the Venture Accelerator program at CSU. Venture Accelerator program was run through the College of Business to help college students that had an idea and had the drive to become an entrepreneur and kind of got them off in the right foot by providing mentors and um, seminars in order to get their idea off the ground. And so when I first entered that the Venture Accelerator program, I was working with a snowboard company called 728 Outdoor. They're still in operation. They make great snowboards. I continue to ride those snowboards today. And uh, with that company, um, I performed a lot of like product testing and analysis for about a year. And I really tested the snowboards. And not only that, I actually had the opportunity to help design some bamboo skateboards and uh, did some research and development and testing on those. Um, along with that, uh, I did a lot of branding and sales with the company. And uh, that was really my bid into the Venture Accelerator program. Uh, during that time, I also got involved with uh, another company called Quadshocks. And I'll go into later detail about that product. And I'll give you a quick fly through in SolidWorks of, of the product and kind of give you a little bit more information then. But um, at this point, I'd like to switch over the camera to my desktop. And we could take a look at some of the products that I've designed in SolidWorks. And here we go. All right, so here we have the Summit T1 extraction system. This is the, the first product I'd like to feature in this video. Um, Summit Extraction Systems is a company that's been out for about a year. Uh, I'm actually one of three co-founders in the business. Um, came up with the idea last year to build a basically a safer closed loop butane extraction system for the plant processing market and you can put in um, a variety of plant materials, botanical feed, um, and extract the oils from them. Um, so this here, this is the Summit T1 extraction system and uh, it's a closed loop butane system so what that means is it fully recovers the butane. So you can see here this is the recovery tank. This is the tank that holds the solvent. Um, this here is called the column. It, it contains all of the botanical feed that you would like to extract the oils from. And then this is a distillation chamber. So with a closed loop system, um, we're going to distill off the, the butane after it washes the plant oils, distill off the butane, and then we would like to recover that butane. Um, so then the butane goes through this vessel here, just a molecular sieve. It's a lot like a silica packet in a beef jerky container. And um, that just removes some of the water that may have been pulled with the plant material. Um, from there, it goes through this pump, which is a pneumatically operated pump. And you can see this, this is a needle valve here, uh, which pneumatically controls it. And it allows you to um, find Fine adjust, finally adjust how much air is being supplied to this pump, and it's a piston-driven pump. Um, so what that will do is then compress the butane back down into a higher pressure, which turns it back into a liquid. Um, from there, it goes through this condensing coil, 
um, and this condensing coil is filled with ice, uh, which pretty much just helps it get back down to a liquid. Now, butane, it only is a liquid at about 32 F, so ice is sufficient to getting that back down to a liquid. The, the coil itself just helps assist condense that, that butane, um, and then from there it goes back into the, the storage tank. So that, that is the, uh, the process in full there. Um, this is actually just a scissor lift uh, with a warm water bath. So basically what that does is this is filled with water and um, the water is then heated up with an immersion heater. This is a large assembly, so it's, it's a little bit slow. Um, and this is an immersion heater here, this circle guy. Um, and you can kind of see the, the coils there. Um, this just heats up the water. It, it's just like a, an immersion heater that you'd use in, in a, uh, a water heater in your house. So um, that's the system. That's, that's pretty much how it works. Uh, if you have any questions on the system or, or what it's used for, uh, feel free to ask. Um, but this, this model in particular, some of the design challenges and some of the features that we really focused on while we were designing this equipment was a, the first thing is capacity. Let's, let's try and fit as much feed as you can into here. This, this holds about five to eight pounds worth of feed. Um, and then also just designed for throughput, increasing the, the overall efficiency of the machine using these temperature controls like this warm water bath, the coil. Um, and then also ergonomics, making it easy for the operator to load and unload the system. Um, with that, there's kind of like a streamlined flow, so it's easy for the operator to understand. Uh, with Summit Extraction Systems, this is the, the T1 system. I'm working on the T2 system now. T2 system will be two columns, um, so that way you could run one and then load the other, uh, further reducing operator downtime. So the next product I'd like to feature is the extraction booth. Now this is a what's called class one division one rated room and class one division one is an electrical specification that basically prevents the electronics to be exposed to the outside atmosphere. Now why that's important is in applications where you're using liquid petroleum gas uh, you don't want a spark to ignite any gas that may be in the atmosphere. And in the case of using a butane extraction system, uh, whenever you would open up that system, butane would then be introduced into the atmosphere. In doing so, you don't want an explosion to happen because it's just so volatile. I mean, if you think about a big lighter, it doesn't take much of a spark in order to get that to light. So this is a, uh, this is basically a paint booth almost, um, the panels are just made out of 18 gauge sheet metal and uh, you can kind of see on the inside here I'm floating underneath the floor um, you can kind of see the chimney and the plenum um, so these here are the fans this would be the outtake fan and the intake fan over here for the makeup air so you're not pulling any sort of positive or negative pressure in the system for the operator um, let's do a uh, quick section view here and I'll show you the inside from a, an easier perspective and then we can see the plenum a little bit better. Um, so you can see there's a, an alarm here and a light um, and also uh, what's cut in half right now is a, is a sensor. So essentially how it works is the sensor is actively monitoring for any sort of flammable gas in the area. Um, if it senses anything then the sounder and the light go off and uh, tells the operator to evacuate the room. Um, at that point, the, um, the ventilation will kick on to a higher, higher ventilation speed. Um, and you can kind of see the, the inlet here. This is the plenum or the chimney, if you will. Um, and you can kind of see it's, it's, like a, it's like a vent that's in a wall, but it just helps direct the flow of the air uh, across the equipment to just really make sure everything's kind of linear going across, um, you're not getting pockets of flammable gas building up in the room um, for further safety for the operator. Now, these booths um, are really popular in the plant extraction industry because of the fact that 
you know, a lot of these guys, they're, they're doing full build-out facilities with class, class 1, Division 1 rated um, equipment, and it's just, it's expensive to hire the contractors and the architects and the engineers to execute that. So this is kind of a full turnkey system. We're actually, uh, Summit Extraction Systems, we're partnering with HAL Extraction Technology, um, who builds the extraction booths, and so we're essentially offering a full turnkey setup for, for these processors. Um, they got the building, they've got the, the compliance system, and so they are good to go. Now, the, the cool thing about this product here is that this is actually um, my first product where I didn't receive equity as a payment. This is a consulting job for me. Um, so the extraction booth is a, uh, it's a, it's a great little, little product for the, for the market here. So, um, the next one I'd like to show you and what I talked about earlier is, uh, is quad shock. So this is what I worked on in college uh, at the venture accelerator program. You can see this is a, uh, a wheelchair. Obviously I, I removed the seat. I didn't model the seat, um, because I was primarily concerned about the hardware down here. Um, so this, this is the, uh, the QX1, and you can see I've got everything modeled. Uh, I've got all the hardware in there. And this was a fun little product to design, and uh, it's really good for um, reducing the impact for the people that are riding in these chairs. It's actually quite incredible how much impact goes through the chair um, with the rigid, uh, the rigid bracket. Basically, they just had a rigid bracket here that held um, this axle. Now, some of the design considerations that we had to use for for this concept was the fact that we were retrofitting our suspension kit onto the existing wheelchair. So we needed to reuse these holes here. Um, and that was a really big part of the design, the fact that we um, could reuse existing holes without having to drill um, and then mount a full suspension kit. Um, so also with that, I tried to eliminate as much friction as possible. So I've got some nylon bushings deep in here, you can see. Um, and then we're also using shoulder bolts. So you can see the shoulder bolt here. Um, so that just, you know, really eliminates the friction in there and it really helps with improving the suspension. Also, if you notice the way that it's oriented, um, it's oriented with the force, if the force is going up through the wheel, if you follow my cursor here, um, Basically, that gives a, a normal component to that force, and it further it allows compression in the spring. Um, so if we if we actually were to flip it around backwards, uh, it makes the mechanical advantage less, and it's a lot harder for the spring to compress at that angle. So that was uh, very important. This concept here is what we used for the utility patent. Um, there's a utility patent for quad shocks for a retrofit suspension kit for these wheelchairs. So um, really cool stuff. This is some of the stuff that I've worked on. I might make further videos in the past with more in-depth reviews and analysis on some of the design features. Um, really get up and up close and personal with some of this stuff. And uh, yeah, but I... Uh, Really hope you enjoyed this video and learned a little bit about me and my company and just want to let you know if you're looking for any sort of product development, I'm help, happy to help you with the number of services to turn your idea into a reality. Um, and there's a full list of my services on the website, www.gladdesignsllc.com. And you can go there and, and check out a little bit of information on the projects, um, some information about me. Um, and yeah, so that's, that's, that's it for this video and stay tuned for more videos on the channel. I'll create more videos about SOLIDWORKS, product design considerations, and things that I'm just generally working on. So thanks again for watching and subscribe to my channel to continue seeing what I'm working on. Sweet. See you guys.